China announced this morning plans to launch a fifth lunar probe in 2017. The goal, collecting rock and soil samples from the moon. The Chinese reached another milestone this weekend, becoming only the third nation to land a rover on the moon. The pictures from the unmanned Jade Rabbit are the first new images from the moon's surface in nearly four decades. The moon is less jubilant aboard, abroad, the International Space Station. Astronauts may have to go on a spacewalk this week to repair a faulty pump. CBS This Morning contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at City College of New York. Good morning. Morning. We'll get to the International Space Station in a second, but, but with respect to this moon landing by the Chinese, uh, clearly an advancement for them, but we'd be getting extraordinary new information because they're there and because it's 2013. This is not really a science mission, okay? Yeah. We've been there, we've done it. However, the Chinese have a well-defined timetable and they have a well-defined goal. In 2025, they want Chinese astronauts to put a flag, a Chinese flag on the moon, which could create a Sputnik moment, just like back in 1957, when the Russians went into outer space first. And some people think that our space program, on the other hand, by contrast, has no timetable, no clear goal, and is an agency to nowhere. So more about national pride and prestige than science. That's right. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's a lot about politics, really. I mean, in China, planting that flag in space to send a message, right? Just as America's space program is ailing. That's right. They're saying that we have come of age, that the United States and Russia had a monopoly. But now, for the first time in 37 years, a soft landing on the moon. And remember, the moon has no atmosphere. There's no parachute that you can use. You have to use retro rockets. Mm -hmm. uh, turning to the International Space Station, how serious is this and what does it mean for the future of international space stations? Well, the space station is 13 years old, and it's beginning to show signs of wear and tear. And now we have this uh, ammonia cooling system, which is malfunctioning, probably requiring a spacewalk later this week to repair it. And remember that some people think that the space station has no larger goal. There's no timetable for it. In another 13 years, it may be deorbited. It may actually have to come down like a meteor from outer space because it has no clear successor after the space station. I know you're a physicist, but I, and, and so I think maybe you can address this, but what about the race for space? And why do we still want to be in space? I mean, people say, why, why are we spending money in space? I mean, and why China wants to be in space? That's the future in terms of space defense, everything, right? Well, you realize that even this TV program is carried by satellites in outer space. Yeah. Uh, the GPS system, weather satellites, telecommunications, it's all in outer space. Your bank records, everything is up there. And the nation that controls outer space has a tremendous leverage when it comes to political crises, yeah. military conflicts. And that's why outer space is still very important. Why China wants a foothold. Professor Michio Kaku, good to see you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.